Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. It is time to get ready for another flu season. Mm. What are the experts predicting and who should get vaccinated? On today's program, we'll talk with Mayo Clinic infectious disease specialist and vaccine expert, Dr. Greg Poland. We'll also find out how you should be washing your hands <laughs> and talk again about the reasons for getting the HPV vaccine. It is a cancer vaccine after all. Dr. Poland, thanks for... Uh, returning to the studio. pleasure. (laughs) We're glad you finally came back because we have a lot to talk about. We do. And let's start with the flu season. What are you predicting? Bad. Really? Bad year. Now, you can't always predict that exactly, but what we can say is the Southern Hemisphere that just finished their winter had one of the worst flu seasons in decades. Australia particularly, Australia right? got very hard And the, do they have the same vaccine that we're going to so get? It, it varies a little bit, but we're going to use a vaccine that it will now be updated for next year in the Southern Hemisphere, meaning that our vaccine this year doesn't have two of those updates. So the question will be, how close of a match will there be? I want to emphasize, though, even when there's not a good match, This vaccine helps to prevent complications, hospitalizations, and death. So the recommendation is every American over the age of six months of age get a flu vaccine this year. But but aren't there some people who can't get it or shouldn't get it? Um, Are there a few with certain medical conditions? Yeah, the only people who really can't get it are people who have had an allergic reaction to it in the past. Very, very rare. And people who have had Guillain-Barre, a very unusual neurologic syndrome that occurs within six weeks of getting the vaccine. All right. Last year, less than two-thirds of American children and less than one-half of adults in this country got vaccinated. Are we going to do better? I don't know, Tom. It is really difficult, and it's not made easier oftentimes by the media who reports without elaborating flu vaccine ineffective this year. Well, what they mean is the vaccine is not designed to protect against symptoms of flu. It's designed to prevent the complications of flu, and it does that well. So if you get the vaccine, even if you get the flu, it won't be as bad, and you're less likely to have a complication. Correct. What was our flu season like last year? It wasn't as bad as the year before. The year before, we had 90,000 deaths and almost a million hospitalizations. So I guess what I've been thinking about is if, if uh, are we following the Southern Hemisphere, or why can't the Southern Hemisphere follow us? It will. Why couldn't, uh, why, was, why did Australia, why did the Southern Hemisphere have such a hard time when ours was relatively easy yeah, last ours year? Ours was relatively mild, but these viruses drift and mutate so quickly. I mean, literally, I have seen it where we prepare the vaccine Within weeks to a month, the virus changes or mutates, and our vaccine is less effective. So we're always kind of playing catch up with the vaccine, the best version of the vaccine in regards to what recently has happened in the other hemisphere. Correct. Tell us about a couple of groups, seniors. I know you've talked previously about what vaccine they should be getting. And also, do children between six months and eight years need two vaccines? Yes, good question, Tom. Absolutely. If they're between those ages that you just mentioned, they get two doses of vaccine. Now, if they only got one last year, then they only have to get one this year. We count that as two. Uh, the elderly, I hate to say, people 65 older. We call and them older. 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 Seasoned like citizens. We yeah, call I like that. Yeah, thank they you. should get one of two vaccines, either the adjuvanted vaccine or the high-dose vaccine. But it used to be said, for example, that people with egg allergy couldn't get flu shots. That's no longer true. Is this pretty much routine in your doctor's office, or should you make a point of saying to your primary care physician or your nurse, uh, uh, your provider, I want, I, I need the adjuvanted or the high dose? If you're over the age of 65, absolutely. You need to be proactive about your health care. All right. Um, complications. Mm-hmm. When people get the flu and get a complication, what are those complications? What happens? Some of them are what you might expect, sinusitis, middle ear infection, pneumonia. Some are things you don't expect. Very high rate, increased rate of stroke, heart attack, other vascular complications. Those are really important and sometimes life-altering events 
which could be prevented with flu vaccine. I just heard a story about uh, people with diabetes, how yes. important it, I had never heard that connection before. Yeah, good point. Uh, people who have diabetes, in, in a sense, are immunocompromised, as are people with other medical conditions, but they have a very high incidence of complications, pneumonia in particular, and sinusitis. I bet people who have diabetes, and that population is growing all the time, but I bet they never would have considered themselves to be immunocompromised. Very good point. But they really are. Yes, they are. <laughs> the, other, the other group that you might not think about, but it's a big issue in the U.S., is people who are obese. People who are pregnant, they have very high rates of complications, and they need flu vaccine. Uh, what's the ideal time to get the vaccine? Because I read recently, and I didn't realize this, is that you can get it too early. If you get it in July or August, it, it may the effects may wear off by yeah, the time I, flu season I, I, gets I think it. July, August is a little too early, but I think the October time frame and beyond, even September, is fine. Now, a new antiviral that's available that I, Zofluza, yeah. uh, let's see, Biloxivir Marboxyl, is yeah, that right? Biloxivir, yes. Yeah. And so there, the one that we previously had was Tamiflu, right. right? And is this one as good, better? I think better, and this is exciting news. This is the first time we've had a new influenza antiviral in, in decades. Um, what's important about this is it's a single dose. If you treat within 48 hours of symptoms, and that's an important point, within 48 hours of the typical influenza symptoms, fever, sore throat, that sort of thing, if you can get into your physician and, and get that medication, particularly if you're older, if you're immunocompromised, you only need one dose, and it decreases symptoms about 24 hours faster than the previous medications, treats all four major strains of influenza and this is really a this is big news but if you have fever and a sore throat though i mean do you just get to call up your primary care and say i got fever and a sore throat i that's, need an antiviral yeah, that's i mean the that's dilemma. like a tuesday I think, sometimes <laughs> i think for most of us when we're uh when we have sort of mild symptoms like yeah. that probably not a reason to be treated. Mm -hmm. But like I say, for um, children, for older adults, for people who are immunocompromised or have other medical problems, I think you certainly would want to just to prevent those complications. And, uh, you know, generally we wouldn't give it without doing an influenza test first. Right. So you can test and make sure yes. it is the flu. Yes. And how long does it take to get that result? You, you can do point of care. You get it almost right away. Okay, so yeah. then you'd know whether or not right. to get the medication. You know, in the middle of an epidemic, might not test if they have common symptoms and just treat, but yes. All right, give us an update on the universal flu vaccine. That's what we're all waiting for, a one-time yeah. one time vaccine and <laughs> good for life. Um, I, you know, that would be the ideal. I don't think that's probably going to happen anytime in the near future. Uh, you, you may be aware President Trump signed an executive order, I think it was last week, actually, authorizing uh, additional research supplements to find a universal flu vaccine and to improve this because this is an annual epidemic that causes mayhem uh, every year. Is progress being made? Absolutely. There's a patch vaccine. There are uh, several injectable vaccines, notably one uh, being uh, developed in Israel that look very promising. The idea is to give a vaccine that forms antibodies to the part of the influenza virus that doesn't mutate. Hmm. Now, what will that look like? Um, I think we may have a vaccine like that in the next five plus years, but likely you'll have to get more than one dose, but it won't be every year. Is there a skin patch now? Yes, uh, not available, but in, oh, okay. in, in testing. What about the mist? Is that available this year for yes, younger? Yes, uh, flu mist is available actually up to the age of 49. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that, that doesn't sound so bad. So Tracy and, could get it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like way, the flu mist. I like just getting the shot. Yeah, yeah. a lot of It feels like do. it's old school, and that's yeah. me. I, I forgot to ask you, is Zofluza a pill or an injection? Yes, no, a pill. So just like Tamiflu yeah. was. But Tamiflu you have to take for a few days? Yeah, you're going to take it whether, multiple depending doses. on whether you're treatment or prophylaxis. But the advantage of this is one dose. I like it. Well, <laughs> we're glad you're back. Infectious disease specialist Dr. Greg Poland. Time for a short break. When we come back, we'll find out how. You should be washing your hands. <laughs> and we'll tell you seven things that if you touch them, you should definitely stop what you're doing. Stop, drop, and wash your hands. <laughs> Plus, an update on the HPV vaccine.
Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Our guest, infectious disease specialist and vaccine expert, Dr. Greg Poland, back in town for another appearance appearance on Mayo Clinic Radio. So now, I, I understand that you showed Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, yeah. That, you know, I'm never up that late, so I missed it. Uh, <laughs> it how to, lives how to forever wash on in. YouTube. Yeah. You, you okay. can go to YouTube and search for Dr. Poland and Jimmy Kimmel, and you'll see a, a fun video that we did on how really how to wash your hands properly. It was funny so how do you i mean people think they know what they're doing we don't know what we're doing how do you do it you need running water you need to get your hands wet lather them up get between the fingers in the depression under the thumb on the tops of the fingers this basically takes you about the amount of time it takes to sing happy birthday to yourself and if you do that, birthday, rinse Tracy. some okay. use paper towels and then use those paper towels to turn off the faucet and open the door of the bathroom. That's the key. So there's germs on that faucet oh, and on the doorknob. Terrible. Really? I, I'm telling you, we, we did a study and we swabbed those faucets and we swabbed the toilet. The faucets are dirtier. Is the door handle to get out of the bathroom also it is just as dirty as grossly the grossly yeah. contaminated? Yeah, because they're cleaning the toilets more often yeah. than they're cleaning the, the handle of the. <laughs> oh. You know, one, one other point about this is a lot of us use, um, you know, some of the hand sprays or alcohol, foam mm-hmm. kind sanitizers. of hand, hand mm-hmm. sanitizers. Um, and you guys have seen the same article, which is interesting and fits with what we know biologically. If you have mucus on your hands, and you use a hand sanitizer, it really doesn't work very well. Mucus is the best thing you can do to protect a virus or a Mm. bacteria. So in a case like that, you really do want to use soap and water. Well, so uh, using a hand sanitizer sort of gives you a false sense of security and is really not worthless, but not very good. Well, only in the situation where you have mucus on your hands. If you don't okay. have mucus, that is, if you've touched a door handle and now you want to clean your hands, hand sanitizer works well if it has alcohol in it. All right. I've heard you say that um, using washing your hands correctly can actually prevent some cases of the flu and some colds every year, yeah, right? Absolutely. You can probably prevent at least one episode of respiratory illness and one or two of gastrointestinal illness a year by just washing your hands properly. And the average person takes 11 seconds to wash or their hands. Less. How long does it take to sing happy birthday? Two minutes? I don't know. Yeah, 20, time. 20 to 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> and, you know, just to make a plug here, studies have shown that women do better washing their hands than men. <laughs> so, well, men, surprising. you got to wash your hands properly. <laughs> Not surprised. Let's talk about the seven surfaces, the most disgusting things mm. that we touch all of the time. You know, to just generalize it, anything that lots of members of the public are t- touching <laughs> sure. are bad. Handrails, doorknobs, computer terminals, telephones. One thing on this list, restaurant menus. I had not thought about restaurant menus. And people cough into them and sneeze (laughs) into them. (laughs) Another thing on the list, of course, animals, your pets, um, and kitchen sponges. Yeah, I thought you were, that was clean. Yeah, they I mean, sit, you know, they yeah. sit out, they're <laughs> damp. <Yeah. laughs> Gross. And money. Money, money, of course, is bad. Money's contaminated with a lot of things, but among them, viruses. Now, they don't probably uh, transfer very efficiently as opposed to, you know, think of at the mall, that escalator handrail mm-hmm. that, that 4,000 people have touched. Anything at the uh, airport or on the airplane, right? The, you know, the the fold down uh, tray tables. I mean, everything in in an airplane. You know, because so many people fly and so many people f- uh, fly ill. My wife and I are in the habit of we we take an antibacterial antiviral wipe and we wipe down those surfaces when we get on a plane. It You're sounds those guys. sounds like a germaphobe, uh-huh. but but they're <laughs> not cleaned properly. And you got a Zofluze in your pocket? And I don't. I don't. But <laughs> I just think you know, your my purse and my phone are the filthiest things that I carry, and I carry them with me. Well, they're, if they the only have you along. on them, they're okay. No, but but I'm touching everything else throughout the day, and then pick up the phone, and so I and, always and, you know, think just, I can't make my phone clean. Just to put this into perspective. Um, there's actually benefit to being exposed to the routine, you know, germs that are around. I, we don't go around and sterilize every surface of our home. It's when you're out 
when you're around people who are ill that you stand the risk of getting influenza and other illnesses. All right, I want to ask you about the HPV virus, HPV vaccine. Yeah. In a concerning study, researchers at the University of Texas found that both men and women in the U.S. have a limited awareness of the fact that untreated HPV, human papillomavirus infections, lead to anal, genital, and oral cancer. So yeah. this truly is a cancer vaccine. This is an anti-cancer vaccine, and it's really sad that there's such low awareness about it. Um, you get infected with HPV and develop lesions, there are no treatments. There's no cure. There are treatments, but there are no cures for this. So this is a vaccine that prevents some seven different cancers. And if you get it under the age of 15, you only need two doses. We have such a severe epidemic of human papillomavirus that very recently the CDC and uh, ACIP have allowed that women, and in some selected cases, men, can get this vaccine up to age 45. I have to just say that because in the last 20 years, I guess now is when the HPV vaccine has come along. Yeah. Is that about right? No, it's been not quite that long. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but as a woman who has been having to go get, you know, go get pelvic exams yeah. for quite right. a few decades now, there has been a huge change in the way that HPV is viewed as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, in the beginning, when you would hear about it or your our girlfriends would be talking about it, it was like, well, that's just the... That's just the way it is. And and so I think it's interesting that for people that are in my age, you know, 50 years old, yeah. that we have had a shift of, ah, this is just something, this is just a cancer that you get yeah. versus this is actually a cancer you can do something about. You know, we have some 33,000 cases of cer new cervical cancer a year, completely preventable mm -hmm. with this vaccine. Anal cancers, virtually all of the oral pharyngeal cancers, and Mouth that, and throat. Yeah, and that's not talking about the genital warts. I mean, we have a clinic here where we have young women coming in whose throats and airways are lined with genital warts, and they get lasered off. Can you imagine how painful that is? And, they, and, then, and then they don't go away. You gotta, they keep they coming will, back. They will come back the rest of their life. Now, who should be getting this vaccine? we got to talk to the parents. Everybody, Every. everybody between the ages of 9 and 26 is eligible to get this vaccine. After 26, then we engage in what we call shared decision-making. So, you know, uh, a man and a woman who are married, monogamous, and are in their 30s or 40s, they, they don't need the vaccine at this point. But other people do and have risk factors. And, you know, in the U.S., think, think of this. Every single person in the U.S. now who begins sexual activity will get infected with HPV if they're not immunized. Everybody. Most of them will resolve that infection, but we don't know who will and who won't. And a substantial minority do not and will go on to develop a cancer. If they get genital warts, which are really common, I mean, we're talking about something like 20% of the American public walking around out there has genital warts. Wow. Those are not curable. Wow. Well, thanks for the great advice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the flu season is coming, and everyone over the age of six months needs to be getting the flu vaccine. What else can you do to prevent flu and colds this season? Wash your hands with soap and water. And we've just learned how to do that and do it correctly. <laughs> and don't forget about the HPV vaccine. It is important for cancer prevention. Our thanks to Mayo Clinic infectious disease specialist and vaccine expert, Dr. Greg Poland. Dr. Poland, always great to have you on the Fun show. Fun to be here. Thank you.